So, everyone's here? Yeah. May I start? Yeah. Okay, colleagues, uh, I don't want to eat the, breath, the bread of uh, US presidency, and of course, uh, Linda will speak at her press conference, and she will uh, possibly also touch upon this development, but I decided to, uh, to go to you and to explain uh, the reasoning why Russia didn't support uh, U.S. Uh, presidency program for this month. Uh, as you know, presidency program is a very informal, indicative document, which, is, which has no formal nature. It's just an outline for the work of the Council. It is being prepared for the sake of transparency and for the benefit of Council members. And there is a tradition that uh, the Council, in informal consultations, the ones that we had today, gives a consent to the number of meetings that are included in this program by the Presidency. Uh, it doesn't mean that the program of work of the Presidency is limited only to these meetings. As you know, there are plenty of situations when uh, countries ask for additional meetings for different reasons, uh, when there are developments on the ground that require our attention. Uh, but normally there is a tradition, long-standing tradition and understanding that the items that are being included into this informal document are, first of all, consensual for all council members. It means that the president takes an effort to work out a program that would be suppo uh, supported by everybody if necessary, going to the common, the lowest uh, common denominator, and there were cases like this in my memory. Uh, secondly, there is a tradition that the meetings that are included there are, uh, are um, motivated or are explained their necessity to be included in the program is supported by the mandated and reporting cycle. It means that if there is a resolution of the council, if there is a uh, necessity to renew mandate, to modify a mandate of uh, US of UN presence somewhere or of a panel of experts, or if there is a provision of a resolution that Secretary General is reporting to the Council, then we have this meeting regularly. All the other meetings are being required by Council members, and of course the agenda for each meeting each day is adopted only at the moment when the president of the council hits the gavel. So we shouldn't overestimate, of course, the uh, significance of this document. I'm absolutely clear about this. So there were two stumbling blocks for us in the US program. The first one, uh, a minor one, but still quite important, is a number of meetings on Syria. We are advocating for a long time, and not only us, but some of our partners in the Security Council, that there is no need to discuss three aspects of Syrian dossier every month. Uh, the issue of uh, chemical weapons in Syria uh, does not uh, deserve, as we clearly see from the meeting, meetings uh, to be tackled uh, every month. So the meetings are very shallow. Uh, on several occasions we even took a uh, decision not to speak. So we don't think that we need to do it every month, and we think that it's quite enough to do it uh, once every three months. And this position was absolutely clear for us, uh, for everybody. Um, we also don't think that we need to discuss separately humanitarian Syria and political Syria. Uh, we think that one meeting would be quite okay from the point of view of better management of uh, time of the Council and resources. But the most important stumbling block uh, was uh, the desire, uh, I would say even the obsession of American uh, incoming presidency to put formally in this program of work a meeting on Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine is not tackled by any resolutions of the Council. There is no mandate cycle. There is no uh, request of Secretary General to brief the Council. That's why we don't see a formal uh, reason for this topic to be included as such in the program of work. Uh, last month, for example, the British presidency included this in their program. We didn't uh, uh, oppose it because it was scheduled for 17th of July, which is the anniversary of downing of MH17, and there is a resolution of the Council which 
deals with this issue. That's why we decided that it was devoted to this uh, topic and we didn't object. Uh, this time our American colleagues and friends just said that we need to discuss Ukraine. You don't need to block the possibility of the Council to discuss Ukraine. But we are in no way blocking the possibility of the Council to discuss Ukraine. As it was counted by our Brazilian colleagues uh, during the last meeting at Ukraine, the Council has met uh, 66 times since uh, February of last year on Ukrainian issues. I think it's even more because there were a lot of issues not directly linked to Ukraine, but they were clearly dominated by Ukrainian agenda. Only last month, the Council met five times on Ukraine, and two times we requested these meetings. It means that we do not only shy away from discussing Ukraine, we haven't blocked a single meeting. We would encourage discussing Ukrainian issues because there are a lot of issues that we think that the Council should look more thoroughly in, into. But to agree to a formal inclusion of Ukrainian item in the program of work would be uh, overstepping our red line. And I made it absolutely clear to our U.S. colleagues, uh, but uh, it was a matter of principle for U.S. presidency, and uh, that's why we didn't manage to agree uh, to the program of work. I personally view it as a proof that, uh, unfortunately, our U.S. colleagues are starting the presidency from the wrong foot, if I may use this impression, expression, because uh, the task of the president is uh, to get a common position and to agree on common position. So he is first among the equals. It's not his task to impose the position of himself or herself or his allies or her allies to the rest of the membership. Maybe it is quite okay in the rules-based international order, but it's not okay given the traditions and the practice that we have in the Council. And we are guarding this practice. And again, don't, me, don't be misled. Russia is not blocking discussion of Ukrainian issues in the Security Council. Russia is very much in favor of discussing these issues. Yeah. So, forgive me, I'm going to have to go down in the weeds myself now and look at UN Security Council procedure, but I thought Ukraine had been on the agenda for at least nearly the last 10 years. Um, and does this mean that you're now planning to call procedural votes on all these meetings that you disagree with? And are you going to keep up your sort of um, tit-for-tat position where if one, if one country calls a meeting on Ukraine, you've, you guys have said you'll call one as well. So can we expect more meetings on Ukraine this month? I would say that tit-for-tat is kind of simplification. We just think that uh, there are certain issues of Ukrainian crisis which, which are more, I would say, alluring for our Western partners to raise in the Council because they think that they compromise Russia, that they put us in an awkward position. But there are other aspects of Ukrainian crisis which uh, are not raised by uh, Western countries uh, because uh, they are clearly implicated in Ukrainian crisis. They are part of a problem, not part of a solution. Namely, uh, supplies of uh, arms to Ukraine uh, and, for example, last meeting was devoted to the, uh, the terrorist methods that is being used by Kiev regime. So we will promote these issues not because of tit for tat. Last, last month we asked for two meetings but there were three asked for, uh, for by our Western colleagues. But we will, ins we will insist that the Council looks on to, into all aspects of Ukrainian crisis uh, in its entirety and not only uh, do cherry-picking uh, on certain issues. Uh, as for the uh, items on the agenda, do you know how many items are there on the agenda of Security Council? If I'm not mistaken, in the last letter that Secretary General uh, sent to us enumerating all the issues that, are, that were raised uh, during last year in the Security Council, uh, there are about 60 items. But according to the rules of procedure, if I'm not mistaken, any item that was ever raised in the Security Council uh, remains at its agenda. So if we, uh, if we take this approach, then there will be hundreds and hundreds, not thousands, of items on the agenda. So Ukraine is only one item, and we are not against uh, Western countries uh, calling, for, calling for the meetings using these agenda items. We never blocked it, and we will not block it. Uh, we had problems, uh, as you might remember, with participation uh, through video link uh, of uh, President Zelensky, which is uh, in clear breach of Security Council rules and procedure. 
that was the only reason why we were behaving uh, a bit uh, agitated in the meetings on Ukraine. Otherwise, we are quite okay, and we will continue to uh, to accept all the meetings. And again, the U.S. presidency had the opportunity to call for this meeting even today. We wouldn't oppose it. So you, okay, so you won't call procedural votes on these meetings. And then just while we have you on Niger, um, there was protests in Niger on the weekend and there was Russian flags being waved, um, waved around. Did Russia have anything to do with what happened in Niger? With the flags? Or no, with, with the what? coup. Ah, with the coup. Not to my knowledge. And I, I know there are a lot of Russian flags uh, in the world and in Africa specifically. It might be a surprise for you, but our approaches are very much popular in the world. Uh, so the world is not limited to, to Western countries and uh, many people view it in a different uh, way. Uh, again, uh, in what I said, there is nothing indicating that we will block meetings. We will ask procedural votes. We will ask for procedural votes if our briefers are blocked. But this is a different thing, not about agenda items and, and about raising Ukrainian issues uh, as such. Um, Joseph Klein, Canada Free Press. Could you tell us uh, whether there are any talks ongoing between the Secretary General or his designees and um, either President Putin himself or any other senior Russian officials uh, concerning the uh, grain deal, the Black Sea grain deal, and the MOU, and uh, perhaps restoring them? Thank you. I'm not aware of such uh, talks uh, right now. Uh, you may ask this question to Secretary General and his team. As far as I know, there was a contact recently because between our Deputy Foreign Minister Virshinin and Secretary General in Rome. Uh, we made absolutely clear our position on the uh, Green Initiative, uh, the reasons uh, why we had to withdraw and to stop this initiative. Uh, I don't think we need anything to add at this point, but maybe Secretary General uh, knows something more than myself. So please address his uh, press secretary. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Um, can you tell us what the reaction was from the Security Council members to the issues that you have just raised before us, including on Syria and Ukraine? And um, is Russia planning to uh, call a Security Council meeting um, in response to the meeting that is on the agenda? already uh, just to correct you there are no meetings on the agenda already at this point the meeting will be on the agenda only at this exact day when the president hits the gavel that's the only way everything else was used to be an indicative program of work which doesn't have any uh, any uh, significance in terms of formal do it's not a formal document of security council it's for your transparency for our transparency it's useful so there is no meeting on Ukraine on the agenda. We will learn about it only on the day when they choose to hold uh, such a meeting. Uh, as for the reaction of uh, members of the Security Council, yes, everybody was disappointed. We ourselves are disappointed because we never expected that our U.S. colleagues will put uh, their national priorities and their position on top of the interests of the Security Council. I, I remember, uh, unfortunately, I'm here for almost six years already, and it has some bearing on institutional memory, so I vividly remember the situation when, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in September 2018, I think, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, one of the predecessors of uh, Linda Thomas Greenfield, all of a sudden decided that the U.S. will hold all the meetings in the open. I don't know what was her reasoning. She didn't explain it uh, for sure. Now the U.S. has the opposite position, but it happens. So at that moment, the agenda was not adopted either, and. Uh, that was the first example when uh, the uh, selfish national interests uh, were uh, attempted to be brought on top of Security Council agenda. I don't think that we will support such attempts uh, in the future by any members of the Security Council. Aren't you worried that this may backfire, like maybe some other members in the Council would maybe uh, disagree to, to add a certain item or meeting uh, to the program of work, and this may uh, uh, be a, a real obstacle uh, in the Security Council. And my second question, do you see that you have less common ground 
with your counterparts in the council to be productive in the Security Council? To the, quite to the opposite. We see that we have more and more understanding among, among Security Council members and the members of the wider uh, UN membership of our position because you clearly see where the crisis in Ukraine is evolving and the true colors of Zelensky regime are more and more clear. As for the possible mirror moves, I think it's what Michel meant for tit for tat. Uh, of course, there is no, no reasoning uh, for this except for the childish uh, desire to revenge but it's not up to me to comment. If they adopt these tactics, uh, we are here, we're not going anywhere. Maybe last question. And uh, will there be a meeting this month on Haiti and would Russia support an international force headed by Kenya? I think that let's wait for Linda's press conference. I already took some of the, uh, of the things that she wanted to say, uh, so I don't want to dwell into this item. It's up to the presidency to tell you. Such a, you could say if Russia would support such a meeting move, on Haiti no, no. or a force, an international force led by Kenya. We need to look into the details. How can I tell you this uh, right now at this moment? We heard about this. Uh, we know that there is a discussion. We know that the situation in Haiti is very dire. Uh, but there are so many aspects that you need to, to take into consideration. We certainly took note of uh, Kenya's decision and we need to discuss it with, uh, with the members of the council. I wouldn't be uh, more. Uh, giving more details of our position right now, okay? Thank you, Ambassador. You had 66 meetings on Ukraine since February 2022, but in the same period, very few on the issue like Palestine. Do you think this issue should be addressed more by meetings and actions? Uh, I think that we have uh, Palestine on a regular basis in the Security Council, in the Middle East. Uh, it's absolutely uh, logical because we have a lot of resolutions on the uh, Palestine-Israeli conflict. We are always very vocal and very supportive. If uh, Palestine and its allies uh, want uh, a more thorough discussion of this issue, uh, more meetings on certain subjects, I don't think we will oppose. But of course, we can't be more Palestinians than Palestinians themselves in, in, the, in this regard. Okay. Yeah, just last, clarify, last question. Yeah. I'm just a little confused because okay. you're saying you're not blocking the meeting. You probably won't ask for a procedural vote. So no, it's still. I we will not ask for You will not. Okay. No. So then it still seems that a country could ask to have a meeting on Ukraine this month and it will happen. Of course. Of so course. Was, was the essence of your disagreement with the Americans the timing of the meeting because it was going to be on uh, August 24th, the on Ukrainian of Independence Day? Was that part of it? Uh, sorry? Originally scheduled for August 24th, the Ukrainian Independence Day. I, I think you have wrong information, but I, not, I will not go into this detail. But again, I, I understand that it's sometimes hard to, to get uh, all these nitty-gritty things about uh, what we do in the, the Council. But it's not a problem of, uh, for us to discuss the Ukrainian crisis itself in all its aspects. We will not block other countries when they ask for the meeting. The problem for us is a blanket kind of placeholder for Ukraine as such on the agenda of the Council, because we see no reasons for this. So maybe it's hard to understand, but believe me, it's a principled position. Otherwise, I don't think that uh, Linda will go forward uh, with this uh, uh, staying without, uh, without agenda, uh, without program of work uh, because of this. So it's, you see, it's also a principled position for the US and its allies. It's not our choice, but it takes two to tango I don't think we are dancing at all, but uh, again, uh, that's what we have. We have what we have. Thank you, everybody. Sorry.